Well, it is uh, June 4th, and that means tonight is the debut of Who Killed WCW? Four Weeks on Vice. Yep, yep, There's a 15-minute teaser on YouTube if you want to watch the early history of Eric Bischoff. You saw it? Yeah. What do you think? It was 15 minutes. I mean, what can you say? You can lie a lot in 15 minutes. Well, sure, yeah. Everybody everybody has a different reason. Everyone's blaming everybody else. And uh there was there was there was some very interesting stuff there, you know. Like Eric Bischoff claiming that until he went to work for WCW, he had never heard of WCW even though he had worked for years in the AWA. Yeah, when I heard that one a little red flag went up, but then I thought maybe he meant like before he got into wrestling. Because you can't, but he sa- you he can't sa- say before I got into WCW, I'd never he, heard of WCW, because that's completely ridiculous. He said until he was hot, when he was hired by WCW, until he was hired, he had never heard of WCW. I, I know he said that, but I'm giving the guy the benefit of the doubt that he couldn't I'm not possibly, giving him benefit. He couldn't not, possibly have said that. I, I, he I, must not, have said before I went. He must have meant before didn't. I went. I know what he said, but he had to have meant before I went to AWA. Because you can't say before I went to WCW. That's ridiculous. It's completely, of course it's ridiculous. Yes. Um, before he went to, AW, I mean, he l- would literally have to know nothing about wrestling when he went to AEW. Sure. I mean, AWA. Yeah. Um, but that's, but I mean, there's at least plausible deniability that before he ever went to AWA, not, he'd never have not. heard of, of wrestling. But to try to tell me that before he went to WCW, after working in the AWA for years, you had never heard of WCW, that is impossible to believe. That's actually impossible to believe. But that's what he said. I know. Um, he also said, hey, "There's a, there's a bunch of stuff there that that uh, the one the thing that that from the 15 minutes that I saw, it feels like you know because which was a lot of Eric Bischoff. I I thought that uh, Medusa and Conan from the little bit I saw, they seemed to at least kind of be. I I felt that they were honest in the sense of when they were asked like." what was wrong, you know, like what, what killed it, you know, they it basically was egos and all that. Um, it, uh, it was interesting that Brad Siegel, um, blamed it on the wrestlers who, um, you know, and then Diamond Dallas Page was really upset. Bill Goldberg blamed it on Russo, who, who, who's a culprit, but he's not number one on the list by any means. Um, the, the only thing I could say for Vince Russo is, is that, um, he could have saved the, um, popularity of the promotion, and he didn't. So um, he made it worse, and it was in a position where it could have been saved. That, but but he wasn't the number one culprit by any means. Um, but some of the stuff. So so um, I mean, when when Eric Bischoff uh, mentioned, I mean, I mean, his his whole premise was how WCW was this tiny little group. And, you know, they were so far behind WWE, which, I mean, from a revenue standpoint, um, they were behind. Um, From a match quality standpoint, they were not behind. From a talent standpoint, you could argue both sides had talent. I mean, WWF at the time, um, I mean, you got to remember in in like 89, WCW was loaded with talent. Um, And then... uh, you know, when you went to the the next couple of years, I mean, that was, those were the dark ages of WWF and and WCW. It was the dark ages of pro wrestling in the whole country. You know, from um, ninety two to ninety five ish, and then it you know came up and actually became bigger than ever. And 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 without any question, the reason pro wrestling became bigger than ever was because of what Eric Bischoff did with Nitro and changed the entire face of what. The entire concept of what television wrestling was, it changed it from wrestling matches and interviews to a variety show um, with a lot of unpredictable segments and things like that. I mean, he absolutely deserves that credit. Um, That format, that is is essentially the format that WWE then took for Raw a couple of years later and also added some ECW elements. And, you know, I mean, but, but it was... WWF was way behind the times. I mean, in the early 90s, the reality is is the guy the, the the company when it came to producing television that was the best was Antonio Peña in Mexico. I mean, he had the 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 best, you know, just because he he just had the the music um and the really great ring entrances 
and you know incredible 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 talent and uh, so they were really the ones ahead and then eric kind of came in and really created a, it was a very different version of a wrestling television show and a lot of elements on that nobody's ever done since and i have no idea why um you know i mean it, it and and I mean, there were, you know, wasn't there were there were people who were feeding Eric ideas, but the reality is is that he was the guy in charge, so he does deserve that. At the same time, there's a lot of myths about like WCW was losing money, um, you know, when it first, you know, from the, pur from the purchase, which had been from late in 1988 until uh, the Bill Watts era, and in the Bill Watts era, I mean, Bill Watts's job he felt coming in was to make a profit on the or, or or lose less money and he made cuts and made a lot of people unhappy and things like that but they got to the point where they were not they were not losing a lot of money under bill watts i mean the, the that was you know he had cut that back down cut the losses down and then when uh you know the key to eric was that he was able to negotiate with Turner Broadcasting, basically a deal where when Jim Hurd was running it, there were no rights fees. What happened was uh, the the higher ups at Turner wanted WCW to turn a profit based on house shows, which was impossible because they weren't drawn very well, and the pay-per-view. And you got to remember, they were splitting the pay-per-view revenue with Turner Broadcasting, so they were not even getting the 50% of the pay-per-view that you would get. They weren't even getting credit for that. They were getting a, a smaller percentage. I remember talking to Jim Hurd, and it's like, and he didn't even know this. He was just like, you know, I was like looking at these pay-per-view numbers and um, and how many buys and how much like the revenue should be, and it doesn't add up. And it's just like, you know, then he found out like the Turner Broadcasting was taking a cut of it. And when they were trying to lose less money, I mean, when you're taking like whatever it was, 20% of your pay-per-view money, it's like, yeah, it's like, it was tough. So when Eric got in there, he was able to negotiate $8 million a year um, rights fee. And under Jim Hurd, they were losing like $6 million a year most years. And if you had that $8 million, if he had that, then he'd have been profitable too with that not well-run company. But he still would have made it profitable based on that that rights fee number. So that was the way that they originally made money. Now, now granted, Eric absolutely turned that company around for a couple of years, um, you know, with the NWO angle and Ric Flair and Randy Savage feud and everything that was going on, you know, the, the, the whole nature of Nitro. The other thing, but, but like when he was talking about how so far behind it was, one of the myths, um, and people say it all the time, is how, you know, the, the, in the, the the ratings thing and it's like I remember when I was writing for the national um, so this is 89 to 91 and um, I would every year do a story in the national on the ratings for the year of WWF and WCW and I also would do it in the observer and the television ratings for WWF and WCW on cable were almost identical I mean like one year one would be up by you know, like very, very little the other year, the other one would be up. They were do it's like people think that it was like WWF killing them in the ratings. And WWF did have higher syndicated ratings because they were in syndicated in more markets. But I mean, as far as the cable numbers, I mean, the, the, the TBS show most of the time, um, you know, in that period was the highest rated wrestling show. I mean, when Bill Watts, Bill Watts, when he had TBS, he had the highest rated show on cable, period. He was beating Vince. He was beating Ole Anderson, you know, um, Crockett, you know, at, at, you know, was, you know, at times, um, well, Crockett was doing as good numbers as Vince because he had TBS. He had the number one, that was the number one show. Um, so this idea, like, like Eric Bischoff, in fact, for 83 weeks, as we all know, did beat uh, Raw and was the highest rated wrestling show. But in years past, that TBS show was the highest rated wrestling show as well, beating Vince McMahon's show. That wasn't the first time it happened. Now, it wasn't as dominant. And also with Bischoff, they did get the thing hot enough to where for a period of time they were actually outdrawing WWF, which 
Obviously, Crockett never did, although Crockett had some markets that he, he, he could beat Vince in. And WCW never could pretty much anywhere. I mean, they just they were they were never drawing. They were never drawing well. But um, the idea that it was like this, these like nobody had ever heard of WCW and and and, uh, you know, that they were so far behind. And it's like they were behind on they were behind on pay-per-view. I mean, they were they were behind in uh, in uh, house show attendance without a doubt. But it wasn't, you know, they were not they were not behind in ratings, though. They were dueling evenly in ratings. And even under Heard, when Vince did, you know, take a lead, so this would have been, um, you know, early 90s now, um, Vince started taking a lead with, uh, you know, at, at one period. You know, for adults, the WCW numbers were still higher than Vince's. Vince's numbers were higher with kids. That was what led Jim Heard to do all that goofy stuff, you know, like... Um, Oz and uh, you know, although that was Dusty's idea, and um, you know the, the the dancing bear dude with Matt Bourne, remember what Big Josh and all these characters, the Ding Dongs, you know all these characters that he came up with, or or that people in WCW came up with, because they had this idea that we got to get the kids because that's the one place that we're losing. When in fact, you know everything they did to try to get the kids got no kids, so. Um, so that was kind of um, far-fetched. The other one that he said that um, I was very, I, I, I can't say this never happened, but um, they, did a, they did a thing and they said that like nobody, none of the executives um, at Turner wanted wrestling, which except for Ted Turner. And that's pretty much true at first. You know, when, you know, the company was bought in, eight, in in late 88, basically because Jim Crockett Promotions was about to go out of business. They were about to go bankrupt, and Ted Turner wanted to keep wrestling on his station and felt that Jim, you know, he didn't want to do a deal with Vince. So he felt that uh, Jim Crockett Promotions was pretty much the last one standing. Bill Watts had already gone out of business, uh, sold to Crockett. There was, you know, I mean, Vern technically was still around, but it was so weak. I mean... Um, and Crockett still had a lot of talent and, and, and was not, they were not doing terribly bad, although they were losing, they were losing significant money by this time. They were overspending, but they were still grossing 25 million a year, which in those days was, was a, was a decent amount of money. Um, so he bought the company and they lost money, but the, yeah, well, the idea when, when the whole thing started, cause, cause, um, you know, um, was that they felt that this thing should make money just based on house shows, house show gates, and their cut of the pay-per-view, and they should be able to pay for everything, and it didn't. Um, after a while, because under those under those parameters, they were losing money without factoring into whatever the TV earned. Um, you know, there was a, a meeting of the higher-ups at Turner with Ted, and I think this is 1992, it might have been 93, but it was right around that range, and they said, like, we should fold this company. We should just put rerun programming in the time slot. Um, it's not worth the losses. And Ted said to them, um, wrestling built this station, because it did, and wrestling will always be on this station, and never bring this subject up to me again. So Eric saying that uh, Ted went to him and said, if you don't turn a profit on this thing, um, we're going to pull the plug on it. I mean, I'm not saying that never happened, but the two things that make that very suspicious is number one, I've never heard that before, and one would think that that would be something that uh, I would have heard by now. Number two, under Watts, which was the guy who you know came right before, not directly before Eric, but very shortly before Eric, um, they were they were already close to making a profit. And number three, once they got rights fees in there, they were making a profit. So it's kind of like this doesn't add up at all because Ted was always adamant and even even like I remember Barnett telling me and this was the day I told Barnett that um, the thing's going down um, when uh, uh, Jamie Kellner made the call and I called up Barnett and I go you won't, you're not gonna believe this and Barnett was working there it was his job so he's his job was gonna be done he was gonna lose his job and I called him up and I go oh my god I figured he had known and he didn't know I go like I'm really sorry about all this and he just goes even then, and he was the closest to Ted of anyone, and he said, Ted will never let this thing uh, die. And I go, it's out of Ted's control. He doesn't have the power, and it's been canceled. It has been canceled. 
And he just goes, you know, what happened? And I said, you know, Jamie Kellner. And he goes, oh, Jamie Kellner, he does hate wrestling. And uh, but the point of all this is that um, I don't buy the story that Ted was going to cancel this thing. Um, it contradicts everything that everyone has always said about Ted and even Ted's son, you know, said the same thing. But that's, you know, I think people trying to create, um, you know, and I think that maybe over this, you know, it's 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 decades ago and people are all trying to scapegoat other reasons for what happened and, you know, save face. And I think that there's going to be a lot of dishonesty. And it was really interesting because Brad Siegel said that wrestlers are when we're talking about like the, the death of the company and who was to blame and Brad Siegel said that wrestlers are pathological liars which I would say in that era I would not say that's a hundred percent true I mean it's more true than now not to say that everyone's honest now or anything but um, I mean you could say you could say that about a lot of the wrestlers back then. I mean, it was a carny business, you know. I mean, it still has remnants of the carny business, but it was a complete carny business back then. Everybody trying to swerve everyone and all the stuff like that. So, um, I am very interested to see the whole thing. I know the first episode is very, very heavily Bischoff. You know, they talk about him getting into uh, wrestling by um, him and Sonny Ono were trying to sell Ninja Stars, and they uh, went to Vern Gagne. Uh, you know, because Eric's from Minneapolis, Vern was promoting AWA, and he had AWA on ESPN, and they were just trying to sponsor the shows, and that was kind of his in. And then Eric, um, Vern invited Eric and tried to teach him to be a television announcer because Vern needed a television announcer because every time, every time Vern would get a television announcer, Vince would hire him from Vern. You know, that was Vince's little game because Vern was running out of money, and Vince loved sticking it to Vern. So. Eric was the guy who, and 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 Eric, you know, and and actually at one point, um, I think, and people know this one, um, Vince tried to hire Eric or or considered hiring Eric and gave him a test run, and then decided against hiring him. So um, you know that was another part of the the story there. So um, it'll be interesting to see how this all uh, plays out. But um, you know, I mean, Medusa basically said it was egos that killed it. And Conan said it was just people looking out for themselves and nobody looking out for the company. And I think that, that those were pretty, pretty accurate of, you know, as far as everything goes. And, uh, you know, Dwayne Johnson's in it. Um, it's, you know, um, we'll see how this all turns out. But they did. I mean, the, the key thing is um, the interviews with Brad Siegel and Stu Snyder are going to be interesting to me, especially Stu Snyder, you know, just because of. What he says, there's um, a lot of things that are, there are some unanswered questions, and Stu Snyder might know the answers to some of them. He was the president of WWF at the time, and when the announcement was made that uh, Fusion, which was a company that Eric was, um, you know, one of the, the key guy to, you know, it was, a, it was a group of people, Brian Badal, Eric Bischoff. They had a big press conference in, uh, I believe it was January 2001, and it was that uh, WCW has been sold to Fusion. They will stay on the, on the stations, uh, keep the television, and you know Eric was going to basically be running the company and and being a part you know part of the ownership as opposed to from before. And Eric, you know, he he had uh, made a lot of plans. There were a lot of people that he had called to hire you know um i believe don Callis, rob van dam was going to come in and be a big star john muse was going to be a booker um you know and uh and many many others you know new you know uh joey styles was going to be a tv announcer i think I, I, I you know um and or at least that was the idea and um you know i just remember the day after that big press conference and Stu Snyder told people in WWF, because he was WWF president at the time, he said that Eric Bischoff is never going to own WCW, no matter what happened at that press conference. And this is before Jamie Kellner was ever hired. And I thought that was very interesting. And I kept being told by WWF, it's like, no matter what they tell you, Eric Bischoff is never going to be running that company. While Eric Bischoff was making the calls to set up running the company, you know, and um, 
making schedules and trying to hire people and um you know he had certain creative control i mean he was he was trying he, his his idea was to take all the stars or all, many of the key stars off television bill goldberg and all these guys just take them off tv and just run bare bones and then build to this giant rebirth episode they would go they would go off the air for you know i think eric wanted it to, to be maybe um maybe a few weeks, maybe a month, something like that. And they didn't want it off that long, so they kind of compromised. Maybe it was like two weeks off, three weeks off, maybe two weeks, I think. Um, I don't remember the exact number. But they were going to do this big rebirth. And then Bill Goldberg, all, all the big stars, Bill Goldberg and Sting and all these guys, would all come back on this show, and that would kick off this big new era with this new company running it and everything like that. And he was building that. He was in control of the booking. Not He was not booking the shows themselves, but he was in control of that aspect of it. And then the Jamie Kellner thing happened. And, uh, you know, the Bischoff group at that point backed out of the deal because um, they had no television. I mean, it wasn't worth anything without the television. And then the television was canceled. But S Snyder, to S Stu Snyder... Uh, appears that he knew all of this before Kellner was hired or or he was bluffing the people in WWF but I just remember always hearing from WWF it's not happening while well, I'm watching Eric control everything and I know that it's not signed in the sense that the deal was not completed that was not a secret I mean it was publicly they were trying to act like it was but we all knew that it wasn't completed and and I remember at even at the press conference um when it was over, I forgot who it was, but uh, um, it was the head up head people in um, at Turner. You know, said technically, you know, this is not a done deal, but it's going through. It's like we're announcing it because that's how sure we are it's going to go through. So it was a very, you know, that whole period. I'm actually very interested in seeing um, if it's explained, how it's explained, um, because there are real unanswered questions about that about that uh, January and February. 2001 period preceding the March death of the company. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.